Thank you so much for that prayer. That's me. That's me you were praying for. Thank you. And um, thank you for leading in worship um, this morning, guys, and um, for the beautiful children's story as well. I feel blessed already, don't you? I'm sure you do. Um, this is my third time that I've, uh, I've, I've been sharing from the front here, and I don't know if any of you have read the book by Greg Mortensen, who, who had a book called Three Cups of Tea. And, and in that, um, he describes how the first cup of tea, he was, he was um, um, saved from death by a, a village folk in Nepal. And, and he said, the first cup of tea that they give you is just a, you know, it's a kind gesture that they give to anyone. And, uh, and then the second cup, oh, you're becoming a bit more of a, a friend to the, the community. But the third cup of tea, your family, you belong. And so I'm likening that to my sermons, and this is my third time, and so I belong now. You're my family, and um, you've got me for keeps. Well, for a long while anyway, because we love being here as well, and we're really growing to, um, to feel part of, of this family here. Um, here we go. Have you ever, any of you, or let me, hang on, let me get, just get this right. That's it. We're set. Have any of you been in a place where you've wondered, you've really wondered what God is like? In some of those songs that we've sung this morning, we've gained pictures of what God is like. But perhaps you've asked yourself the question, has God become the wonder of my life? It's a deeper it's a deeper conversation that we're having here. The wonder of God in all of life. Are we filled with awe for who God is? Or is our life filled with an ignorance of, of who God is? I... Um, I wonder if you can, any of you can remember, and those who weren't here um, three weeks ago now when I, when I shared last, um, you're excused uh, from, from answering this, but can any of you remember what I shared three weeks ago? And I'll get you to share with the person beside you if you can remember what it was that, that I talked to you about, and I'll give you a hint. Um, the main thing is, is part of it, and the magnets, if you can remember the magnets. Okay, share with the person beside you what it was that the main thing that I shared with you three weeks ago. Go for it. You've got 10 seconds. Okay, time's up. I feel greatly encouraged because there was some conversation happening there and it might have been just you saying hello to each other. But I'm sure some of you were thinking back through some of the things that, uh, that we shared three weeks ago. And um, because I'm ever the optimist. And uh, some of you will remember that I shared this formula with you. God's presence plus our awareness of that presence of God plus our humility in accepting the presence of God in our lives equals transformation. Now, I've, I've been thinking about that since, and I think it was, I was slightly wrong in, in putting the equals, equals to transformation because transformation is a process. It's just like seeing that little... Little baby Noah, um, going, going from that, the baby that's in, just in the hand to gradually becoming uh, a, a, an infant who's, who's a bit harder to hold in one hand. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a slow transformation process. And uh, just like, uh, is, it, was, is it Freya was sharing in the children's story, that, it's, that it takes time 
for the development of, of something. You don't see it straight away. Um, you don't see a person give their life to Jesus and kaboom, straight away. They're, they're a completely different person. Um, you know, I've spent some time with the Lord this week. Um, but you don't see a completely different person in me this week to what you saw last week. It's a slow process, a gradual process. And so transformation is a journey um, of, 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 over time. And it's a bit like, well, let, let me share this with you first. So the main thing that I shared with you was that God desires for us to be in relationship with the three-in-one God. Um, and, and, and the community of who God is is what God desires for each one of us. Come and be part. Come and be part of that community of, of, of all of God being, being, being part of us or, or us being part of God. And, um, and, and that slow process that I was talking about is, is, um, is also, I was thinking, Linnell does my background slides. And this week... She came up with, uh, with this, this background slide for me. And then later on in the week, she came with a, a different slide. And, and I said to Linnell, but how is it different? And I'll, so I'll show you the different slide that, that it is. Can you see the change? Let me go back. Did you see it? You... I'll go back once more. Ready? Ready? See, so, so it's, it's an almost imperceptible change. Ready? And, and, um, but but it, it meant a lot to Linnell, and I just go with the flow because I'm, I'm, I'm you know, she's the, she's the one with the artistic savvy. And, and, um, and it's an imperceptible change that takes place, but that's the sort of change that takes place in our lives as we're open to the Spirit of God. It's a, it's, a, it's a very gradual change process. And thanks, Linnell, for, for that subtle uh, change that you put in on, on my PowerPoint slides. And, and so the, the process, the, salvation is not just... Jesus is not just wanting to give us a ticket to heaven. Uh, he, he does give us that. But he said, I want so much more for you than that. I want, I want to, to, to be there with you in the journey that's in front of you, all the way to heaven. I want to be part of that journey with you. And so it's, he's there for the ride along the way. He said in John 10.10, 10, he said, I've come that you might have life and have it in abundance, as some translations put it. I've come that you might have an abundant, rich and satisfying life. So um, it's not just one of my lecturers at college, um, one of the things that I remember him saying was, he said, heaven's not just pie in the sky by and by. It's a piece of cake while you wait. And, and so God's there for us for the journey of life, not just for the, um, for the final outcome uh, that's there for us. One of um, my favourite authors, Max Licardo, has these words to say. He says that the loss of mystery has led to the loss of majesty that's there in, in God, in who God is. See if you agree with what, what he's saying. He said, the more that we know, the less we believe. He said, no wonder there's no wonder. We think we've figured it all out. It's strange, don't you think? Knowledge of the workings shouldn't negate wonder. Knowledge should stir wonder. He goes on to say, who has more reason to worship than the astronomer who's seen the stars, than the surgeon who's held a heart, than the oceanographer that studied, uh, pondered the depths? And, and I, th I think um, Max has a, has a case in what he's saying here. Um, I wonder whether we have become so accustomed to the information about God that we're left without the wonder of, of who God is, the awe of God. 
Those of you um, sort of my age and beyond, do, do you remember, and, and I'm sure they st may still do it in school now, I, I didn't check, but do you remember how you studied frogs um, in, the, in the science lab? And uh, you put that frog on the, on the dissecting table and away you went to, to study what a, fr a, a frog was about. Um, and that's how you studied frogs. But I, I would propose that there's, there's an alternative way to study frogs. What if we were to get into the habitat of, 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 of where frogs are and to study, study their life cycle and, and, and see what they're really like? And, um, and perhaps it's, it's similar in terms of our approach to God to, to, to get in relationship with God and, and to get to know God um, along the journey of that relationship. I have a, um, I have a, 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 a little video clip that I'd just love to share with you. you're drawn into the awe of who God is as you, as you see um, his creative uh, power at work. And, and I guess, you know, getting out into nature and, and seeing some of the awe, awesomeness of, of the way creation was put together helps us to, to, to gain that picture of an awe of God. And I think as we come to worship, there's a real need for us to not come with the yawns of, oh, I've heard, heard, heard it all before, but, to, but to, to, to gain this fresh insights, try new things, discover new things about who God, who God really is. Um, one of the authors that I, I, I read um, of recent times, Anne, Anne Dillard, I think her name is, she says that when we come to worship, you know, often we come with a yawn and a sigh. But she says, what we should be doing when we come into worship and when we sit in our seats is we need to put on our seat belts and we need to put on our crash hats because we just don't know what this awesome God of the universe is going to do with us in our worship of him. Isn't that a neat picture to have? So, friends... Put on your seatbelts and, uh, and your helmets and let's worship.
Let's worship this awesome God. Here's the, here's the question that I, I, w- I want to ask us. How, how can be, we be more aware of this God of wonder? Sorry. I think it, the, 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 the first and foremost, it takes intentionality on our part in, 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 in terms of opening ourselves up to this God of wonder. You know, um, most good things in life take intentionality. Um, When Linnell first saw me across that room, it took intentionality on her part to come across and and talk to me. And and I followed up with some some intentionality as well, that's for sure. Um, Intentionality of purpose is what is what builds relationship, builds what is most important for us in life. So, um, so that's first and foremost. Um, one of my favourite characters from, from the Bible, and if you haven't already discovered this, one of my favourite characters is, um, is David. And uh, he's, a, he's a man, he was a man with heart. He had some. So he had a real drive to him as well, and and, and uh, a sense of, of strength and power. But I loved the the heart that David had, and the heart that he had for his God, and and how he describes that um, so much in the um, in, in in the the Psalms. But um, there was something that David did in terms of his intentionality of that awe of, of discovering that the wonder of God. There was something that he did that's worth us emulating. And uh, can you think what it was that David did? And it's over and over in the Psalms. Can you, can, can you think what it was that is worth our emulation? Share that with the person beside you. All right, time's up, sorry. Um, see if you agree with me on, on what, you were, what, what you thought David's focus was. Is that what you came up with? He, he focused in on praise, praise of his, of his God. And in fact, uh, there are numerous places I could take you to in the Psalms where, where David shows that, that he's, he's praising his God. And uh, let, me, let me share a, a few of those with you. Psalms 103. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With all my heart, there's a man of heart, with all my heart I will praise his holy name. You want another one? Here we go. Psalms 146. Praise the Lord. Again, let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I'll sing praises to my God with my dying breath. There's intentionality. (laughs) Right through life, he wants to be focused on praising his God. Here's another one, Psalms 34. I will praise the Lord at all times. I'll constantly speak his praises. He says, I'll boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart, come, Let's tell of the Lord's greatness. Let's exalt his name together. We've been doing just that this morning in our praise time. And thanks again, guys. It's lovely to to come and and, and praise God. And that's exactly what the the Psalms is about. The Psalms were the songs of the Old Testament times that David wrote many of them. And they were just means of of praising God to music. And uh, so, so for, for David, uh, very important to, to come and praise God. And he says, if you're down and out, if you're feeling low, 
the best thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do is come here to worship and praise God. Now, why does David say that? It's probably the last thing that a person wants to do when, when you're feeling down and out. But he's saying, when you come here and, and together focus on God, where are your eyes looking? Down or up? Looking up. Looking up. And as we look up, our fo focus turns away from the problems. Ever notice that when you're when, when you're going through emotional pain, you tend to look down to where the pain is. So when you look up, your eyes are drawn away from the, from, from the, the problem that you're facing and, and, and they're drawn into the wonder of who God is. What a, what a way to be in awe of God, the God of wonder. So it's no wonder... <laughs> Sorry, excuse the pun. That, that David is focused on praise. There's another, um, another time where, and, and look, you know, as you go through the Psalms, you'll see there are, are, are times of pain that David goes through as well. It's not just, it's, it's not just this glossy sort of um, everything's, everything's going well all the time uh, for, for David. Um, it's, it's, it's not like in, in, I don't know if you remember the movie that used the song Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Um, it, it's, it's not that sort of glossy picture that's painted where um, it's, it's just about, you know, you, you, you don't, you don't recognise the pain that you're going through. But it is about an anchor for the soul that David talks of, whereby in spite, in spite of the difficulties that we're facing, we've got this anchor, this solid anchor of assurance of God being there with us and his hand being there to, to, to hold ours as we go through the struggles of life. There's a, um, just before I go to this one, there's a, one of the psalms that David shares, um, Psalms 42, where he says, um, As the deer pants for the water, so I long for you, O God. He says, I, I thirst for God, the living God. And it goes through, he then shares some of the, the, the pain um, that he's going through. He said, My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. He says, and then he says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart sad? He says, I'll put my hope in God. I'll praise him again, my saviour and my God. And that's the chorus of his life. In fact, through chapter 42 and 43, you see it happening again and again. This, 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 this commitment that David has to praise his God in spite of what's going on in his life. So, um, this, this psalm is a reflection, really, of, of the uh, little video clip that I, I shared with you. And, and, and in this, David is, is really focusing on, on, um, on nature and how that tells of, of, of the wonder of who God is. And he says, O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. Any of you um, looked up into the heavens and seen how high that is? And you uh, looked at, uh, at astronomy and see how vast our universe is? The glory of God is vaster than our universe. Um, when I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you've set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? And so compared with this, this awesomeness, this wonder of who God is, he says, who are we by comparison to that? 
And yet he goes on to say, you've made us only a little lower than God and you've crowned us with glory as well to look after the creation that you've made. And, 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 and so it's not only do, in, in praising God, not only is David putting in perspective who God is, but he's also putting in perspective who we are. We're sons and daughters of the God of the universe. Wow. Wow. So what can we take as the, as the real benefits then of, of praising God? What, what, what is there? What's the take home from this of, of, of why we'd want to be involved in, in praising God? First of all, it focuses on who God is, the God of the universe. It also shifts our attention from ourself to God. We're not God. God's God. And sometimes we're tempted to be Lord of our lives. But God's Lord of all, so he's Lord of my life as well. And so there's that benefit that comes from, from praising God. And it also helps us to get to know God's character. Because that's what praise is about. What's the difference between praise and thanks? When we praise God, we're praising him for who, who he is. When we're thanking God, we're thanking him for what he does. And so praise helps us to, to focus on the, on, the, on the character of God. And, and, and as we focus on the character of God, we're drawn in to who God really is. And that only makes us want to praise him all the more. <laughs> and so there's a cycle that develops of, of, uh, uh, of praise. And so it's no wonder in Revelation uh, where you see that scene at the, uh, in, in the throne room where we're all around the throne. Um, there's, there's, there's this ongoing praise for God because he's a God who's so worthy of, of all honour and praise. So we have the God of wonder. And um, I wonder, I wonder whether this week, you and I, this coming week, here's our homework, um, this coming week, we focus, we focus on praising God. Intentionally. Some intentionality we're going to focus on, on praising God. Just this one thing. One thing we're going to focus on praising God. Um, in, in whatever way God impresses you. And, and be it one of the songs that we've sung this morning of, of, of praise. Um, it's, uh, or, or whether it's a, a psalm that we go to. Or whether it's a passage of scripture that we go to. Or whether it's... Um, it's, it's a, uh, as, we, as we look at nature, we're drawn to an aspect of who God is. Let's focus on giving God praise and, and see what God does with that in our lives. And, and in order to focus on praise, I wonder if we... we Focus on the words God, you are, and then put the words in. And then, and then hone in on what, what that aspect of God is and how that impresses, impresses you. And, uh, and that way, we're focusing on praise rather than just on, on thanks. So God, you are... And um, two words that, that aspects of God that just um, fill me with awe and wonder is um, something that can, keeps coming up in the Psalms. A God of unfailing love and faithfulness. And so they're two aspects of, of God's character that, that I love to dwell on. 
God, you're a God of unfailing love and faithfulness. And see what God does with that. That's our homework for this week. Next week, I have the privilege of sharing with you again because you're family now. And, um, and, and I want to share with you how we can experience the wonder of God, of God more in our lives in some really practical ways um, that, that I'd love to look at with you. So what's the job this week? Honing in on praising God. God bless you. And I'm sure he will as we focus on praising his name because that's what we were designed for. Bless you.